Hello and welcome to another episode of The Thing About Cars. Very happy today to be coming to you from Atlanta, Georgia on this special occasion. Uh, uh, we have a, a surprise special guest for you guys. But first, our stalwart regulars are Dave. You there? I am here and apparently stalwart. Yes, very stalwart. And Ben? I am here. Excellent. And the one, the only Mike Pennington from McGuire's. Mike, how are you? I am doing great and I am here too. Excellent. <laughs> Uh, should we should we give you the uh, your official title at McGuire's? Is that worth sharing? Um, yeah, I, I kind of lead our our global training initiatives, uh, all of our events and experiential marketing, and of course our solutions hub. You know where people can flip that bottle over and, and get that eight hundred number. You know, obviously COVID now that number is not working, um, uh, but when that's up and running, that's the the team that helps everybody, whether that's social or on the phone. So, I, I, a little bit I, of everything. I love it. Yeah, I got to confess, I'm having a little bit of a fanboy moment. I've always been a, a, a user and a fan of Meguiar's products. I'm pretty certain we've actually met at a car show once, um, but it must have been more than 15 years ago. And that, um, That's possible, and uh, it sounds like it was a good experience. That's always fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. If you remember a car show where large quantities of products disappeared, that was probably the one when Nick was at. <laughs> I, I think I remember that one all of a sudden, you know? Yeah. Just yeah. Magically, yeah. everything on the shelves disappeared, and it's like, yeah. where did they go? Oh, yeah, man looking unusually large and, you know, in a trench coat, and all of a sudden there's nothing left. On, that was Mickey. <laughs> Isn't there a statute of limitations? on buffer theft or something like that. <laughs> that is great. So yes, um, let's let's uh, let's do a moment of trivia, a grand trivia auto question. You guys ready for this? Yeah. All right. So our trivia question for the day is: In Alabama, it is illegal to do what while driving? Is it illegal to drive while blindfolded? Is it illegal to tie a dog to the roof of your car? Is it illegal to spit from a car or a bus, but still legal to spit from a truck? Or is it illegal to sell cars on Sundays? And that's our trivia question for the day. One of those is the correct answer for what is actually illegal to do while you're driving in Alabama. We'll answer that at the end of the show. I was banking on Mary, your cousin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can you do that in your car, though? <laughs> you, you could, I suppose. <laughs> Is that while you're driving or, or park somewhere, you know? <laughs> it's the drive-by wedding. There you go. <laughs> so, Mike, you've been with McGuire's from the start. Uh, it sounds to me like you you got out of college and you just jumped right onto the McGuire's uh, uh, ecosystem and stayed there. I have been. It's been, let's say, about 31 years now, and I started out in that solutions hub. And believe it or not, I have uh, – it was funny, my parents – you know, often kind of scratch their head and go to college for, um, you know, computer science degree. And now I'm, uh, you know, talking about detailing and selling car wax. But to be honest with you, I wouldn't trade a thing. I wouldn't change anything. So uh, it's fantastic. And I've done a little bit of everything here. But um, again, it's it's great to go to work. In fact, I'm at work right now. So uh, I love it. Yeah. Awesome. I'm going to let Ben and, and Dave take over with a few questions here. I'm, I'm, I'm still sort of starstruck by this, by this is actually happening. So. <laughs> <laughs> so those are, you know, we don't, we don't record video for this uh, for a reason. Cause Vicky, I mean, Mickey with the vapors is a little disturbing. <laughs> the vapors. Is that a, yeah. <laughs> actually uh, it, it's, I'll go, I'll go first, Mike, because I think, you know, the, being someone also who got a degree in something that didn't use it, use it. what is it about, about McGuire's that really captured you and, and gave you a career trajectory that, that, that you've enjoyed? Uh, well, that's an easy one. It's literally the love of automobiles. And I know that's a pretty, pretty broad statement. And you'll have these cliches, you know, find something you, you know, you love and you never work a day in your life. And, and that is so true. So, yes, I do the computer science stuff here and there work. We all do that. But, you know, you work on cars, you go to car shows, you meet people. Um, it's like a family here at McGuire's. I know that sounds uh, odd as well and cliches, but it is so true. I get up, I go to work, and I can't wait to get to work. I mean, it is fantastic. So. That's really awesome. Uh, and, and of course, we understand the love of cars is what brings us here. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. is. Uh, I can remember, I think my dad, 
you know, I'm, when I was five years old, you know, my dad bringing me in and asking me about tools and, hey, go grab me a, you know, half inch, whatever. And I'm this little toddler guy running over, stepping up onto the step, grabbing the tool, going back to him. So I got my dad to thank for that. And it's it's fantastic. So, <laughs> yeah, very cool. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I frankly am jealous, you know, that you get to live <laughs> in that environment and do that work every day. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, but 31 years is unheard of for anybody in the business. Uh, it's uh, the the idea that you describe the environment as being something like a family is is kind of surprising and yet not surprising. Every time I've encountered the McGuire's folks, uh, you've treated me like family. That's for sure. There was a there was a time when I was doing a nonprofit fundraiser, and I said, "Hey, could I give away some McGuire stuff?" And I thought we would end up with a gift basket. Um, or something like that. And instead I ended up with, I'm not kidding, two boxes of uh, cleaner wax, uh, uh, washing pads and like assorted other things. And I was like, holy mackerel, the generosity of you guys was just completely floored me. And uh, and I, I wanted to say, I really appreciate that. Um, but, uh, but it's true. How did you guys foster a culture of family? Is that just the way it's always been? Well, yeah, and, and obviously up until from 1901 up until 2008, it was a family-owned business, and that was Barry and, you know, his his dad and uncles, and then ultimately his grandfathers who started the business in, in uh, 1901, but that whole fostering of just treat people correctly, whether that's employees or consumers, and, and everybody will win in the long run, and then in 2008 when 3M purchased us, purchased us um, that has continued and, and 3M has continued to um, allow that and push it. And it's been super fantastic. So um, it's the right thing to do. That's yeah. why it really yeah. is. It really sure. is, you know. Ben, you got a question? Not at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've used McGuire stuff on your cars before, haven't you, Ben? Yeah, uh, I can't remember specifically which product because it's been, uh, you know, a, a little confession here. It's been so long since I've done anything to clean or detail a car that I can't remember what I've used. <laughs> well, and we don't like, like, like Mike said at the beginning, we don't have to make this a McGuire centric show, but, but I wanted to ask Ben specifically about his Lotus. Uh, you've got, ah. a, a, you've got a Lotus with a fiber, a very old paint job on a fiberglass shell. That is um, correct. How are you going to go about, uh, are you going to repair the skin? Is it, is it, are you going to do anything to it or what? Well, that's not in the cards right now because what it needs is very, very extensive uh, because, you know, it's, it's a 50 year old fiberglass body and <clears throat> the paint has got a whole lot of fading and what they call uh, uh, star cracks or spider cracks. Uh, they arise from various different stresses. A lot of it is UV damage. Almost every upward facing surface has a whole bunch of cracks. If you look closely at the roof, I mean, from, from a distance, 10 or 15 feet, it just looks like an old, slightly faded car. But if you get close up, it almost looks like alligator skin because of all these cracks. And the only way to really make those go away without coming back is to grind it all down to the gel coat grind it into the gel coat and lay a, a thin layer of what they call veil or tissue. It's a really, really thin fiberglass mat and then build back up from there and repaint. So, you know, that takes, you know, hundreds and hundreds of hours to do. It's a skill that I don't have at the moment. And if I were to pay somebody else to do it, it would be probably more than twice what the car is worth. Oh. Uh, but that said, uh, there is still a lot of potential to polish it up a little bit, you know, bring up the color and the shine a little bit. So, you know, that's where I'm going to focus for the time being. I know it's not going to look perfect, but if I can make it look a little better, great. Yeah, yeah I know it, it. Yeah, Mike, I'm going to defer to you on this one to tell me this is not an at McGuire's endorsed use of our products. But with friends who have had fiberglass vehicles before, um, several of them now actually swear by McGuire's marine products in order to uh, protect the surface because you know, they're designed for you know, fiberglass boats and, and that, that live a much harder life. And I know two of my friends who restored fiberglass cars, you know, fiberglass shells, said the exact same thing is that like once you've done it, you don't ever want to do it again. <laughs> um, and so something like McGuire's, it you know, really does give it a really great protection to, to you know, help fight off both UV damage and water damage. My so God, true, so true. And sometimes people have come to us and ask us about a boat or or how do they take care of their boat. And sometimes we can't assume automatically that it is a fiberglass or resin situation. So we'll 
sometimes ask, is it uh, the original fiberglass or did you get it repainted? Maybe it's a go fast boat or something. And, and of course they say, oh, I did get it painted with automotive furniture, um, automotive paint, and we'll switch them right back over to the automotive products. So a couple of little uh, differences between theirs and there's some similarities too, but important to pick the right product. Oh, yeah, because some of those boats are not painted. Some of them are just, you know, gel coat on the surface. Right. Right. And that can be a little challenging to work with. It's a lot yeah. thicker. It's a lot harder. The porosity is different than automotive paint. In fact, uh, guess who invented mold release wax? Um, right here in uh, Southern California was Barry McGuire's oh, dad. Wow. No kidding. Yeah, the whole process of molding, laying that down and popping multiple parts out and, and making those parts uh, almost perfect once they pop out of that mold is, as well as saving that mold for future applications of multiple pulls. Cool. Wow. So yeah, I'm, I, long. So Barry McGuire's dad was something of an engineer. Uh, he was. He, I, mean, I believe, he started when he was like eight years old in the business, and he basically worked up until he unfortunately passed away. Mm -hmm. And he was responsible for a lot of our formulations up until the very end. And what's interesting is he didn't really have any formal chemistry knowledge. It was all um, literally where the rubber meets the road and learning that whole process. So. They say some of our formulations are very scientific, and some of the formulations that we still utilize today is just, let's call it a little bit old school and a, a little bit odd, I guess you could say, but it works really well. So he had just years and years and years and years of experience in making products of what to do and what not to do. Yeah, you know? right, right. Is the, is the market, I mean, I kind of halfway know the answer to this question, but the, the aftercare market for car care products is kind of huge. Uh, can you give us a, a, a like sort of a bird's eye view on exactly how big that overall market is? Well, it's, if you think about it, uh, for the enthusiast especially is, you know, that's one thing when you go to a car show or you put your, your, your ride on display somewhere, sometimes you can't see those internals Sometimes you can't see some of the suspension components, whatever that may be done. But think about car care is, that's one of the first things people see when you walk up to a truck, a car, whether that's brand new or an old classic, is that's almost what stops people is what it looks like. So the great thing about car care is it works on all cars, all brands, young, old, new, um, classic. So it, it's a great industry. Um, it's global. You know, we go to some of these countries out there, and you'll find Meguiar's, I believe, in, gosh, 70 or 80 countries. I don't know the exact number now, but around the globe, and you'd think there's really not a market for the enthusiast or the hobby. But next thing you know, there's these underground meetups and get-togethers and clubs, and, and it, is, it is alive and well globally, you know, and not just the large countries you would first think of, you know. Right. Yeah, and we we've had a, a number of international connections um, through this show. I'm curious for, for your opinion. Where when you go to other countries, um, where do you find either the the most unusual or the craziest uh, car aficionados or, or car care fans? Well, it's 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 kind of all over the board because in some countries, like you go to Sweden. And there's a, a, a large uh, American muscle following there, which you would think that wouldn't really fit the boat. Um, but then you go to some other countries and let's call it that hobby or that passion for the automobile. We all go to the aftermarket. We think of the, you know, the, the exciting, all the, you know, suspension motors, that typical um, car meetup, I guess you would think about. Mm -hmm. But in some of these locations, that passion is alive because these cars or this car that this family have may be the first car that they've gotten within their entire family. So it's kind of a different reason that it's super special. So uh, Australia, I mean, you go anywhere, um, sometimes it's underground, as you guys well know. Uh, sometimes it's more organized. You know, New Zealand for how small it is, gigantic following for cars down there. You know, uh, we have a McGuire New Zealand office and a Darlene Smith's wonderful job at driving that hobby, and it is alive and well. It, it just about anywhere you go. Yeah, I think that that's you, you. Actually, you hit my favorite one one time when I was in um, in Scandinavia, wandering into a Swedish muscle car. Um, what looks like uniquely American is um, so different in terms of of the culture. 
Um, and the, the underground aspect of it, I think, is fascinating uh, to, to go to different countries. Um, I can't think of, uh, the name of the car is escaping me. The Russian, the little Russian. A lot of Yes, the, Volga, the, the people who have passions for those around <laughs> the world and will spend money yeah. fixing and restoring what was essentially, you know, you know, a subservient car to the Renault Alliance. Um, just just <laughs> amaz- amazed me. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, they, they built those on uh, worn out tooling they got from Fiat, I believe. Right. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of a lot of has a dedicated long term following. That is true. They do. Yeah, but uh, and, go ahead, Dan. I was going to say, so does Trabant, and they were made of even worse stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but they keep on going, right? What do you what do you suppose the staying power of those cars is? Is it just that Mother Russia keeps on cranking them out, or or do people actually find reliability there? I don't know. The the Trabant was East German, so uh, I imagine there's a little bit of German work ethic in there, but it's still a crap product at the beginning. So <laughs> I think it's just the, the love of it that that makes people subject themselves to these masochistic feats of you know, <laughs> keeping them around. There, you, can, you can't under, uh, underestimate that psychology. The first yeah. car, or there, the second car I had that I really truly adored what was i i think 94 was the last year they made the mercury capri which you know mm-hmm. basically you know, that w- 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 was powered by a couple of nine volt batteries and a hamster and <laughs> i adored that car and i polished that car and i preserved that car to the point it was embarrassing <laughs> <laughs> was that your first car dave no my first car was uh my actually my first car was a 64 mustang 64 Mustang. Man, it must have hurt to get rid of that. It, it, it did. It was also entirely, it had a V8. It was entirely too much car for a 19 year old. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, that the, the Ohio Highway Patrol had me, you know, well documented. <laughs> Especially being a V8 versus a six. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Mike, what was your first car? I had, gosh, my first car was a 1989 Honda Civic. No kidding. Awesome. It was, I actually love that car. It's probably one of my favorite cars because it was my first car, of course. And, you know, against, uh, my dad enjoyed helping me, but he wanted to teach me lessons. So, of course, back then the aftermarket wasn't as full as as it is now. So, of course, I cut the springs. I added the air dam. I added the wheels, exhaust, all that fun stuff. And, and uh, it taught me a lot, but very fun. I got a lot of great memories in that car. Yeah. Uh, took, you know, good times a, right there. That was a good era for those too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I was in a similar situation. Mine was an 86 Civic and I very much wanted to tinker with it and ended up, ended up doing nothing really. But, uh, <laughs> but it was just a ton of fun. It was a solid car. Um, Mike, I wanted to ask, you know, looking at your history with Meguiar's, what do you think that it, it, you've seen a lot of successes and we can certainly talk about those, but what do you think that Maguire's stumbling blocks have been? Where have the where have the speed bumps been? What kind of mistakes has the company made? Gosh, um, mistakes is going to be tough um, because we've been super fortunate and, and really stuck to what we've known and be true to who we are. Um, so I, you know, the mistakes aren't nearly as as prevalent as just staying true to who we are to that enthusiast. You know, um, I don't know if you want to call a mistake is not, uh, you know, developing products for anybody and everybody, but that kind of sounds funny because our products can be used by everybody, but we do cater to that enthusiast that has that more critical eye, that more critical ability when they're applying, you know, that they want more out of products. So, but that's probably a good thing. You know, that's kind of what has set us apart and, and added to our, um, I guess, our success. In, in, a, in a in an odd kind of way, you know. Well, I realize the question is somewhat unfair, but you know, I didn't <laughs> didn't know if there was a a lessons learned moment that you had along the way, or that the company realized they were going, you know, down a direction that they maybe needed to change or anything like that. But, yeah, no, we we've been very 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 fortunate, and you know, it's uh, yeah, there's all kinds of little things here and there. You know, all businesses have those, but I don't think it's anything in my 31 years here that have really steered us off course we always learn you know uh just by you know there may be a product that was launched um that we thought was going to do well 
that maybe didn't do well and and maybe that could be a mistake by you know not talking to our consumers more but those are so few and far between again very fortunate uh that we know kind of who we are we know what we represent we stick to it um and and work with our strengths and and we do listen to our consumers a lot like car shows we talked earlier you know not in the last year or two but we have so many touch points where we're get to talk to people directly and that is such a huge benefit and and in some cases they tell you what they want in some cases they tell you what they love uh, and in some cases they tell you what they clearly don't like about a smell or a fragrance or uh right. you know the way something works so uh very in tune i guess you could yeah. say and, and uh-huh. we work hard at that very very hard at that yeah. well i think it probably i think it probably demonstrates the value that you all put into marketing research and that you know especially uh, no one's come out with you know a s'more scented car wax. Um, the, the that's just wrong, Dave. Why? What, uh, why would you think of such a thing? Yes. Uh, where do you get s'mores from? Yeah. Why not? Are you hungry right yeah. now? Is that where I'm coming from? So this is the funny thing. Also, being a career marketer and having worked a lot in branding, you have to be able to recognize a really bad idea when you hear it. <laughs> that is very true. Well, yeah. a s'more scented and, car and wax. I know I'm not saying that s'mores is a bad idea because I personally love s'mores, but in car wax, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, see, now I'm going to be thinking about that for the rest of the day, Dave. Thank you very it's much. It's both a car wax and a dessert topic. And a dessert topic. <laughs> there you go. Well, oh it's my. funny, you, you, we, we chuckle and laugh at uh, fragrances, but you would be surprised how powerful that is in appearance care products, you know, because a yeah. consumer versus a professional. Um, completely different ideas. You know, sometimes professionals, the the worse it smells, the stronger is what it means to them. Oh, you know, yeah. and then a consumer, you got to have a good experience. You don't want something that smells really bad while you're working on your vehicle in your garage all day. So it's it's that's a big part of uh, the the product development. You know what? One of my funny things with product smell is with uh, interior products. Uh, some of those things you can spray on your upholstery and carpets that have a strong, like, chemical fake fruity fragrance. When I smell those, my first thought is this car has been very dirty at some point <laughs> <laughs> because and, and somebody used that on it. <laughs> it's like, what are they trying to hide? Yeah, right. what, what, yeah, what smelled worse that they needed this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Experience has taught me never to ask somebody that question. Right. <laughs> well, and then you ask 10 people, what's, what do you want that, let's call it secondary fragrance to smell like? And you get 10 different answers. That's right. You know, yeah. it's amazing. Even internally here, we go around and do, you know, uh, fragrance tests or, or, or color, whatever the case may be. We'll have some internal focus groups. And sometimes we're all over the board internally. Um, but you got to go with what your consumers want, you know, which is amazing. But it's so funny how that brain works in the well, and, and also how customers evolve. You know, it, it's oh. what 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 you feel is sophisticated as a sixteen or seventeen year old consumer versus a fifty five year old consumer is totally different. Right. You know, when I, was, when I was sixteen. I would, you know, I want something that's going to smell like Teen Spirit. Now, you know, my entire world smells like Versace and Lysol wipes. <laughs> yeah. What if you're fifty-five with the heart of a sixteen-year-old? Though, which way do you go? <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm probably fifty-five with the common sense of a sixteen-year-old. Oh come on! <laughs> I don't know if my wife would even give me sixteen on that uh, brain yet. She'd probably give me single digit on that one. You know, uh, same, same here. She's like, I'm not 16. You're still a nine-year-old in a 15-year-old body. Um, Mike, what are you driving now? I have a um, a combination of, I got an old, a 67 Chevy 2. Uh, that's mm. kind of my, uh, in the garage, got a big block in it. Nice. Um, did all the work on it. I've always wanted that second-gen Nova. And I've had that car, my gosh, probably 17, 18 years. Put multiple motors in it, multiple transmissions, you know, with all my hot rod buddies that I've known since high school. That's the best part of it. People say, um, well, do you like your car now? Well, I love my car, but the journey with my friends yeah. of making that car. You guys have all heard these stories. I yeah. lived it. I can attest to it. That's the best part of it is the memories you're making there. Yeah, the car's fun. It does big, huge burnouts, right. you know, but <laughs> <laughs> those memories. Also got a R8 in the garage, a first gen R8 manual. Wow. Wow. interesting and that's uh, my wife drives that that's her uh let's call it weekend toy as well so uh got, and then got a tahoe and a explorer 
So a little Very bit cool. of everything, yeah. actually, you know, all over the board. Yeah. Well, well, we've come to that part of the show where I'm going to ask you for our standardized questions here. And then and then I'd like to hear more okay. about what McGuire's has on deck for 2021. Uh, and we're running out of time. Awesome. We'll, we'll edit this out. If we need to circle back with a new Zoom link, I may have to do that. But, uh, uh, but uh, I want to make sure we have enough time to ask these questions. My first question for you, Mike, is what is your dream car? Oh, that that's probably an easy one. Yes, I, I mentioned earlier I got that Chevy 2, but I would say it is clearly an original, authentic AC Cobra 427. Yeah. I mean, uh-huh. who, who would not want one of those? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. I don't be able to afford one. I Well, the answer is no on that one, but you never know. <laughs> you never know. That's right. You never know. Question number two, where is your next road trip going to be? Next road trip. Um, well, define road trip. How many, does that have to be a certain mileage at all? Or I'll say uh, probably Bear Jackson in March, because obviously Bear Jackson Scottsdale was January, got moved to March. So I'd say that's going to be the next road trip out there, minus all the fun ones up and down the coast, San Diego, LA, you know, all the, the hills and valleys. But uh, I'd say Bear Jackson in March. Very cool. Uh huh. Question number three, what's the most fascinating thing you've seen in someone's house or garage? Oh, boy. <laughs> that, oh, that, that'd that be a tough one to know. I would say the history, I'm going to lump all that. Most fascinating is the history of you go into these garages, especially some of these garages that have been around a long time, and you see a lot of photos, pictures, um, vehicles, and the history that goes with that. Um, you take that garage tour, and you pause and you and everything has a meaning in that garage. Typically, every tool has a meaning. We had to create this tool because nobody made that tool. And those are the stories that I personally love to hear, kind of the behind the scenes thing. So I know that's a broad answer, but it, it really is the right answer for fascinating. I think that's a great answer. I, I think that, you know, it's a very human answer on top of that. My, my fourth question is always something random and silly. So my question Uh-oh. for you today is, is the zombie apocalypse has begun. You have an SUV and a baseball bat. Where's the first place you're going to go? <laughs> where, where the zombies are not, I guess. <laughs> I guess try to go where the zombies are not, you know. I, I grab my wife, go to my neighbor's house, pick them up, and and we are out probably the middle of the desert, I would think, somewhere. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, sounds reasonable. Well, sounds we, reasonable. Yeah. Uh, if we if we don't skip to another Zoom call, we've got about six minutes left. Okay. Um, I wanted to touch on two things. What's happening with SEMA this year, and what's going on with McGuire's product line for 2021? Well, we're on, we're still in full blown SEMA mode right now already. Obviously, planning as if it's going to happen, and we certainly are crossing our fingers that SEMA and the rest of the shows are going to be full born because we're missing everything about everybody. Not everybody in the hobby is missing, but we're we're ready to go. Um, already planning our 2022 items. But for 2021, we launched last year um, a lot of new items um, ranging from, you know, a hybrid ceramic wash and wax that is designed to maintain a professional ceramic coating you had installed. Or maybe you put your own ceramic, like our ceramic um, hybrid liquid wax on there. Um, So that is going to be a great maintenance item. We've got a new hybrid paint coating that we launched. Uh, believe it or not, take some of that chemistry of a professional coating that they apply and allows you to put it on as a DIYer in your garage. So you get tremendous protection, tremendous chemical resistance. That's called our hybrid paint coating. So we're kind of building that bridge between these pro coatings and uh, a a do-it-yourself installed. Now, that's not to say a pro coating. Plenty of great ones out there. Trust me, there's a lot of great pro coatings. If that's the way you want to do more power to you. In fact, we sell some of those, but uh, a lot of people love to to work on their baby themselves. And now there's an option for that. And then a couple of smaller ones, uh, almost like line extensions that we call them, like our ultimate um, insane shine foam oh. uh, is a great product. A lot of people like foam on their tires because it's a one step where it cleans, conditions, and protects. And of course, everybody likes shine when it comes to tires. So this is our highest shine foam product that we have. Um, And then, of course, uh, you guys probably know our ultimate line of products, like our ultimate liquid wax, ultimate paste wax. 
Gosh, those have been around for years. We actually upgraded the formulas to give you a little bit better gloss, a little bit easier application and removal, but it has some of those same generic, um, I guess you could say, um, experiences, but just improved them a little bit with technology. So improvements, new, a little bit of everything. And then I love to tell you 2022, but you got to wait till SEMA for that one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've always wanted to go to SEMA. I've never, never actually made it to a SEMA show, but uh, hopefully one of these days we'll, we'll make it out there. Oh man, please do. And, and, and when you get there, I'm going to say not if, but when, uh, stop by the booth uh, yeah. for sure. And we can give you a personal introduction because that is when we launch our new items for that following year. I wonder if we could take the thing about cars there and how do we make that happen? It would be, uh, it'd be cool to find that kind of a, a, a connection. Yeah. A you, connection. There's, there's gotta be a way to do that. You know, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Very cool. Um, Mike, are there any parting words for our listeners before we, before we cut loose for the day? I would just say, you know, in, you know, car care is 12 months a year, choose the right product, take your time. There are no miracle products. You get out of it what you put into it. And I guess bottom line is if you're working and struggling and sweating and grinding and and if car care is hard work, you're probably using the wrong products, yeah. you know, or techniques. So find wow. yourself a good quality brand, um, follow directions. We like to say RTFL, read the friendly label. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, All right. And, and dedicate yourself and you'll enjoy it. And everything that you've mentioned, nothing requires really a professional background. These are things that the that the everyman can pick up and just use without special tools or or education. Absolutely, all of our new items for 2021 are designed for that DIY uh, do it yourself in your garage, and they're available pretty much anywhere. Whether you like to shop online at your favorite .com, to your favorite brick and mortar, so all those items we mentioned are readily available and available now. Actually, believe it or not, cool. Excellent. Yeah. Well, thank you, Mike. This has been really good. Um, let's let's do our grand trivia auto, and then we'll we'll close out for the day, shall we? Yeah. Let's do it. All right. So the question is: In Alabama, is it illegal to do what while driving? Is it illegal in Alabama to sell cars on Sundays? Is it illegal to spit from a car on a bus, but somehow still legal to spit from a truck? Is it illegal to tie a dog to the roof of your car, or is it illegal to drive blindfolded? Mike, you go first. Um, I am going to say B, spit from a bus or a car. Got it. And Ben, who has a, a long history of growth in Alabama, what are you going to pick, Ben? <laughs> yeah, I grew up there and, you know, they're all plausible and they're all implausible at the same time. Uh, of course, spitting is a way of life there, so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, <clears throat> but being one of the proverbial buckles of the Bible belt, I'm going to go with, uh, sell a car on Sunday. Ben says it's illegal to sell cars on Sundays. Dave, what are you thinking? Oh, the humanitarian in me hopes it's illegal to tie a car uh, dog to your roof. Ah, got it. Well, the, the true answer is uh, that it, in Alabama, it's illegal to drive while blindfolded. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> oh, my. Thank so goodness for that. <laughs> the, uh, the, the, the rule about it being illegal to tie a dog to the roof of your car, that's a law in Alaska. The part about being illegal to spit from a car or a bus, that's a law here in Georgia. And, uh, and illegal to sell cars on Sundays, well, that's actually Indiana. So Interesting. Um, that was our grand trivia auto thing for the day. I learned something new every day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> kind of weird, right? Like, how do you get to a place where you have to make it illegal to drive while blindfolded? How, why did that become a thing? Because you or think about it. Yeah, every one of these laws is probably based on something, on an incident happening. More than one. It, 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 it's, it had to be enough of a chronic problem with car with dogs freezing to death on the roof of cars in Alaska that they had to pass a law to make it illegal. It's just unbelievable, unconscionable. It's just mind blowing, so is what I mean to say. So if David Blaine or David Copperfield come down and they couldn't do that drive while blindfolded trick, you know, is that is that out of the question? I guess apparently so. <laughs> I don't know. That they should test it out and see what happens. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Mike, thank you for being our guest today. I've thoroughly enjoyed the episode. I, I, and uh, anytime you just want to hop on and, and rub elbows with us, we'd certainly welcome you back. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And this has been awesome. And definitely want to see you at SEMA for sure. Yeah, definitely. You can count on yeah. it. One of these days, we'll make that happen for sure. Thank you for joining us, Mike. All guys. You guys take care. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. 
And to our listeners, thank you as always for joining us for The Thing About Cars. If you like what we do, please rate us on Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts or wherever you find the podcast. We really appreciate your attention and helping us find a larger, better audience. If you don't enjoy what we do, take it out on NPR instead. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, in the meantime, we hope you and yours are all staying safe and healthy. And uh, we'll see you with another episode in about a week. Take care, everybody. See ya. You guys be safe. Take care. Bye-bye. This has been The Thing About Cars. We'll see you on the road.